Okay, YouTubers. This is Terry, the old guy from egadjewelry.com. The jewelry doctor here down in the Oak Alley Art District in Melbourne, Florida. What I got here today is uh, an example of two hollow rope necklaces. Both of these necklaces are broken. I recently did a video online of repairing one of uh, a hollow rope necklace. We got so many reviews, we thought we'd come back and do it again because there were some questions that evidently I forgot to answer. The first one's 8 millimeters wide, 34 inches long. It's broken. It's 10 karat yellow gold, 27.6 grams. The other chain's only a 4 millimeter wide, 21 and a half inches long, and uh, it's also broken. And again, it's 10 karat yellow gold, 6.6 .6 grams. In my experience, when it deals with hollow ropes, it seems that the 10 carats seem to break a lot easier than the 14 carat. Even though when they sell it to you, they tell you it's a harder metal, and that harder metal's going to hold up longer. Well, that harder metal is very uh, brittle, and when it's brittle, it has a tendency to crack more so than 14 carat would. 14 carat would have a tendency to stretch, but the 10 carat usually just breaks. Okay. I believe you all can see it a little better now. Um, what you have to do when you're working with these hollow rope necklaces is uh, the most important thing I find is clean that chain. Throw that chain in a cleaner. Don't take it out until you know everything is out of those tubes. Leave it in there quite overnight sometimes, you know, or, you know, long enough. You just really want to make sure that there's no dirt, grease, anything up inside that tubing that when you go to heat it up to flow to solder it's all going to come bubbling out turn brown and therefore not allow your solder to even stick you'll have to start over again plus you'll discolor the gold having said that what i do is i throw these things in an ultrasonic cleaner i leave them in there until i am happy that they are done i remove any of the bad links that are on the chain uh you got to get rid of them otherwise you can't put them back together and I take it back till I get two good links, one on each side. And when I get one good link on each side, that's where I start. And when I start, usually what I do is I'll take a magic marker. And you'll see on the tips of these, on this one here, I've got a magic marker right at the bottom here where I'm going to cut it. And plus I mark the link rather well so that when I cut this one and I cut this one, and I open them both up just a little bit so I can slip the two of them together and push them down so that the links are closed. Well, I turn it to the side, I'll see the magic markers, and I won't lose my spot. And believe me, if you drop one of these chains on the floor, on the ground, when you've just put it back together and you don't have any marks on that chain, it could take you quite a bit of time trying to find out where it was you cut the two links apart and where it was you put the two links back together. Okay. Once you have these links cut, what you're going to do is you're going to put the two links together. Now, to cut these links, I use one of two things. I'll use a regular set of cutters, which I'll bring in. A regular set of cutters. And sometimes... I'll just use a scalpel. I'll take the scalpel, I'll come down on that link, and I'll just wiggle and push down until I go all the way through. And this makes a nice clean cut. I'm already through. And on this one, and I want to be right in the middle. Give it a little wiggle. You can feel it go through. So these two links are, are cut now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open them up. And when I open them up, I'm going to enter, I'm going to interlink them. And when I put them back together, the only way you're going to be able to tell the spot that I put them back together in is because of the magic markers. Okay, now, as you can see, I have put this chain together. And what I did was I marked those two links with a black magic or with a blue magic marker so that it would stand out a little more than that little black tip that I had on there. But to change together and everything is matched up. Let's see if we can keep it in focus. So 
Now the question is, where do I solder it? And the place that I solder it is right there. Can you see it? Right there. Get that chain together, just like that. Make sure you push the links a little bit closer to what I have them here now, but I left them a little bit open just so you could see a little bit better. But that's how it looks. And when you go to solder, there is a certain procedure I like to use, and I'm going to run through it really quick. First off, once you get this chain back together, you lay it up on a charcoal block. Keep And on your charcoal block, you will have a line on your charcoal block. Make it with a saw blade if you have to. But you don't want to lose your spot. Because the next thing you're going to do with this chain is you're going to wind up uh, coating it with a little bit of boric acid and alcohol. And the boric acid and alcohol is to prevent any fire scale from forming when you go to solder it. The boric acid and alcohol is going to make that blue line and all that blue magic marker stuff disappear or move away. But if you have it up on top of your charcoal block and you have it on top of your line, you'll be able to see the spot where you got to solder it. Now, sometimes these chains won't lay right when you go to solder them. And what I like to do is, if I have a chain that I need to like twist this way and twist that way so that the piece just lines up, you don't want it to be open. You can't solder if it's like that. So what I'll do is, I'll tighten this side up, I'll lay a tweezer on it, I'll tighten this side up, I'll lay a tweezer on it, and next thing you know, right there, that's my spot. That's where I'm going to solder it. Now, when I use solder on this thing, the only solder that I recommend you use is the Extra Easy Flow, and I particularly like Hoover and Strong, but the Extra Easy Flow melts at a slightly lower temperature than the Red Door 14 or 10 Carat Easy does, and um, it might prevent you from melting this necklace. And the flame you want to use on it is nothing that's going to be a strong flame, like a piercing flame, because that'll just melt right through this tubing. So what I like to use on it is like a wider flame, a broader flame, and I will use smaller pieces of solder than normal on a solid rope, because I want that solder to melt rather easily, and if you put a big piece up on there, it's liable to not melt before that chain melts. So, boric acid and alcohol. Have your chain on your mark. Burn off the alcohol. Put small pieces of solder when you put them up there. You've got to flux that joint, which if I didn't mention it, flux it, a little bit of flux, run it down your seam. Use a soft flame and a soft flame on and off, on and off, on and off until the solder flows. And then roll it over and do the other side. So, once you get it finished, finishing is quench it, ultrasonic it. If you have to pickle it, pickle it. And you can polish it, clean it, and give it back to them. You're all done. They'll have a hard time finding out where you worked. Now that I've explained all this to you, I think I've covered as much as I can. Now we'll show, we're going to shoot the video of me doing it. Hold. Okay. This is the hollow rope chain. I now have it set up on my block, and um, as you notice, well, I don't use a line. I've got a crack running through my block, but you can see the the two links together. You can also see, if I back it up a hair, that I also have a couple of a pair of tweezers laying on top of them. And I, I really like to use the, the tweezers because what the tweezers does, it um, just holds them in place. You know, sometimes when the chains heat up, fire up they'll shift but if you hold them in place they'll shift and then they'll come right back to where they were that's a little trick I like to use I'm going to coat this area that I'm going to solder with a combination of boric acid and alcohol that blue is probably going to disappear but I know where my link is because of that crack in my charcoal block I'm going to film this from the side so that you can watch how I use the torch on and off method and you'll see just the basic way that I do one side and then I roll it to the other and then I do the other side. It's not that hard. It takes a little more time than a solid link because you can't heat it with a fierce flame. You have to be soft and gentle. But um, just watch how it works. I've done so many of these things. Let's hope this one goes just as smoothly. Okay. I've got everything here. 
what I'm going to do now is uh, I've got everything set up to solder. I'm just going to coat these links with a little bit of boric acid and alcohol to just preserve them from discoloring or anything for me. I'm not too worried as long as I keep it on that crack. I'll go to look to make sure my lines are touching and everything, but it's not going anywhere. So, let's realign it. up work acid will powder up and it did now I'll take a piece of this small solder and leave one there right in the crease I got another one small one I'm gonna put right there and then I have one more little one and these are just little pieces of solder I like using the little pieces because they seem to flow a lot better All right, now the trick is to heat it up slow enough that the solders don't bounce off. Let's get this flame a little bit softer. That's soft enough. I like to keep my hands on the chain in case it moves. I can always shift it back. See the solder's already balling up. That's a good sign. Look at that, the solder's already flowing. Let's see it all to go. I want a good scene up here. Yeah. That puppy is done. Now let's flip it over and do the other side. And right there, roll it over, be right on top. And go between those two, right there. Now, let's get a couple little pieces of solder and we'll put them up on top of there. The other side's already soldered, so I really don't worry about too much shifting and movements. And one piece there. down on the end. I got three little pieces up here. That ought to be it. Let me get this last one in place. Okay. You gotta forgive the shaky hands. Forty years ago, I had a lot steadier hand. And again, look at the flame I'm using. Nothing hot here. Nothing super hot. I'm not going to melt those links. I better not. Customers don't want that. Watch the solder flow. Watch the solder flow. There we go. Now let's get it to run down the sides. There we go. As you can see, it's done. I'll quench it. And I'm going to come back and show you the seams that I made. And you can tell what I've done. Okay, here's the chain. After being soldered, I uh, threw it in the ultra soldering cleaner for a little while, but it still needs to be polished, and that'll hide everything. Um, the seam is right here in front of you. If you can see it, well, let's see if we can see it. But it looks pretty good. There it is. Is that the seam? Yes, that's the seam. See the seam right here? I'll roll it over, and then you can see it right there also. So, but, after I polish it, you won't even be able to see that unless you feel it. Let's see what it's like when I get done. Remember, these chains take a little bit more time to do. You should charge more for them, because you've got to use more solder probably, and at the same time, um, 
you're able to save something that otherwise would be discarded. I'll show you again after I polish it. Okay, YouTubers, this is Terry, the old guy at EGAD Jewelry, home of the Jewelry Doctor and Pawn. Um, I'm all done. I took the chain after I soldered it and I showed it to you. I threw it into the ultrasonic cleaner and because I used the uh, alcohol and boric acid, I didn't even have to pickle it. There was no fire scale or anything there that I had to uh, drastically take off and everything polished up with a little bit of bobbing compound and, uh, and uh, rouge and of course I used bristle brushes. But if I had a, brought it out of the cleaner and I would have seen uh, something that I had to go back and repair on, you know, these hollow rope necklaces and a lot of the hollow jewelry, uh, sometimes it takes a while for it to dry out before you can work on it. But one tip I'd love to give you is uh, if you're working on some hollow stuff and you need to get to work on it, you might just set a little bit of the part wherever you're going to work on and uh, put that in denatured alcohol and um, just, sw you know, swizzle it around in there, bring it out and set it on fire and you'd be surprised. All the water will go right out. Um, okay, now back to the chain. Can you see my, my, my joint? Let's see. I always have problems finding my joints too. Um, uh, there it is. I think that's it. Right there. Yeah, right over top of that dot. See the link? Solid stiff. Let's roll it over. Looks good. See the link on the other side? Right there. Solid stiff. This fellow's going to be able to wear this chain as if nothing happened. Of course, it's going to be a little bit shorter, but hey, it's better than throwing it in a drawer and letting it sit there forever. I'm happy to have the opportunity to show you guys how to do these uh, hollow ropes, and very fortunate that we had one come in that was this big and made the explanation so much easier. You all have a good day, and remember, any questions, contact us at egadjewelry.com, or you might even try shopping some of our products on Etsy or on our Shopify store at egadjewelry.com. Have fun, and any questions, send them to me. This is the old guy, Egad Jewelry, and I'm out.